Should you aim to get your hands higher in the golf swing? Today we're going to really be looking at generating more power, especially with the driver, and what we should be doing at the top of the golf swing with our arms to create that stretch. Make sure you check out this video. So although I've missed that a little left of target, it was really long for me. Yes, I'm gonna gain a, a touch of distance with the left, but that flew 270 to finish 296, and I got my ball speed up to 155. So I tend to average a little lower than that, closer to 150, and I tend to fly the ball more like 255, 260 carry to finish 285, because I get quite a low spin rate. But that was definitely longer for me. And I was trying to get the sensation there of creating a bigger coil, a bigger stretch in my backswing. That's what I wanna focus on in today's video of what we should be doing with our hands or our handle in the backswing. So simply just trying to get our hands higher, which I've taught many golfers who come in and, and that, that's what they're working on. They tend to do it falsely. We tend to see this lifting movement where the shoulders end up too flat, no real coil in their backswing. So I don't want, and there is some lift, do not get me wrong, it is not just glue our arm, lead arm across our chest and turn. Because you can see that would end up being a very flat, very rounded type of golf swing. There is some lift here with the lead arm, but I don't want it to be independent. So we've got to focus on making a big shoulder turn, okay? Having some connection of lead arm across the chest, so we do not want a huge separation here. And again, there are some good golfers who you see in this position who reroute the golf club very, very well. Are they making it easier or harder? You know, they're great at doing it and generating some speed and consistency from there. You know, the, the Jim Furyk and Matthew Wolfs would be very extreme versions of that. But it's maybe not the simplest, the easiest way to get the club back to the golf ball on plane. And that's what we're really discussing for the majority of golfers. So it's not gluing our arm across our chest, but it's not lifting without that shoulder turn and that shoulder tilt. So we're aiming for a good 90 degrees of shoulder turn, right? So we want to get our back to the target. But we also want to make sure there is some tilt, which just means my lead side is going down, my trail side is extending. To have my shoulders on a slight angle downwards, not getting them too flat here. Because if I completely lose my posture in the backswing, again, it's gonna be quite difficult to get back down into position and be able to strike the golf ball consistently. But actually getting our arms further, or hands further away from the golf ball is a power source. So golfers are talking about creating that stretch. They're very right, it, it is a power source. It is something we want to see in there. And I think an old misconception used to be about in the backswing creating this corkscrew effect, which would be almost limiting my lower body. And we've all seen those um, images of Nick Faldo working with his caddy, uh, her holding his knee, trying to actually restrict this trail side. But if you look at actually how modern speed is being created, actually it's trying to get the arms further away from the golf ball. So we're not trying to limit turn here, most people need to allow their hips to rotate, which is gonna cause that trail leg to lose some flex to actually make that big shoulder turn. That means they can actually then stretch their arms away. Whereas if they restrict with their lower half, it's just gonna be hands and arms lifting to the top of the golf and to try and create that height, that stretch. That's not power, that's not power at all. So we're, the corkscrew effect, if you like, is actually more the transition, the downswing, where our lower body should start the downswing first and create some separation between upper body and lower body. But we shouldn't really be trying to restrict movement here with our trail side on the backswing. What we're trying to do if we're looking for more speed, and that's why I'm focusing today on the driver, is create a bigger shoulder turn, a bigger stretch, and get my hands further away from the golf ball. That's a lever arm and that is a big power source. So what I was demonstrating before I hit the golf ball was trying to get that feeling of big shoulder turn, big stretch of arms away from the golf ball, not necessarily high on their own, but further away from the golf ball. 
that's a big power source, but you can see to allow that, this hip has rotated and my hips have turned here by 40-ish degrees. That will depend on levels of mobility, flexibility. So a good exercise that you could do, or a couple of exercises. One is just grabbing a, a stretch band, a TheraBand. And what you're going to do is put it underneath your lead foot. If it's not a looped one, obviously just tie a knot in it. If it's just a band, like a yoga stretch band. And just incorporate it into your grip, into the hold of the golf club as best you can. Don't worry about the grip being perfect. And obviously what we're trying to feel here is that big stretch on the backswing. So we're trying to feel that pull here. Okay, so my hands are getting further away. But I'm definitely allowing my hips to rotate and my shoulders to rotate and I'm still creating some tilt. So you can see my lead shoulder is lower than my trail shoulder. And I'm stretching those arms as far away from the golf ball as I can. So depends on the, the, the band to how much you can stretch. There's obviously different amounts of resistance. This one's quite tough. But that's a good exercise. The other way I would start, I would put an alignment stick just between your feet. Let's have a focus point of a golf ball just for a second. Now this cane is going to be slightly near my trail foot, so my right foot, just on the inside of my trail thigh. And I'm going to go club across shoulders. I'm going to aim to create this good, at least 90 degree shoulder turn, which means I'm matching this club shaft up to this orange line. But the end of the grip is pointing downwards around three-ish feet outside the golf ball. And then from there, I'm going to stretch my arms away from the golf swing. And that's creating that big movement again. Now, if I took my lead hand off and I hold it with my trail, you'll see although this elbow is flexed down, there is some gap between the elbow and the rib cage. So if you are trying to keep your elbow tucked in, and you've seen those exercises with a, a glove, you know, yes, you can, you can actually keep a glove squeezed under this and actually still create some separation. If we're going for power, we're definitely not trying to keep this elbow tucked in tight to our rib cage here. And actually golfers who are in this position, they tend to then throw it away on the downswing because there's that equal opposite reaction. So the elbow needs to flex down, but there needs to be some separation of elbow to body to rib cage here in the backswing. Let me go ahead and just hit a couple more. And when you're working on some speed exercises, initially you've got to worry a little bit less about direction. I'm, I'm not suggesting direction isn't important. I hit that last one about 30 yards left. So it may be missing the fairway there. It would have to be a generous fairway to hit it. But when you're working on some speed exercises, initially don't worry as much about the direction. I think once you find out that sort of 100% speed, if you need to rein it back to 85% to hit a few more fairways, do it. But you've got to sort of feel what that 100 is first. So, big stretch. So I'm aiming to turn my shoulders at least 90 to match up with the orange line. A little bit of a tilt. So left shoulder is lower than right and I'm stretching my arms out. And that's what I was getting the feel of. And you can see to allow that, my hips have rotated not holding that hip. So feel the stretch. I hit that one nicely down my target line, big high draw. I'm, I'm almost out of breath there. Some of that is trying to talk while swing and hit golf shots but part of it is it's feeling like an athletic movement and golfers uh, people who say that golfers aren't athlete are lying in the modern day game 100 percent they are athletes you could put them into lots of sports and activities and they would generate huge speed and power so that was up to 106 mile an hour club at speed 151 so not quite as good a strike perhaps it felt solid uh, but that still had good distance for me flew 265 to finish 286 and it was down my target line. Really liked it. Let's hit one more. It's a big stretch. So hands further away from the golf ball, yes. Lifting the arms to the top independently, no. Is there some separation of the arms away from the body? Yes, we're not gluing the arms to the chest, but we've got to make sure we turn correctly on this tilted axis 
and stretch. It's not just a lifting movement with the arms to the top. And the other key point is don't restrict with this hip. Allow it to rotate to allow your torso to rotate and your arms to get further away from the golf ball. Okay, that's that feel. Big stretch, big hip. That felt solid again. And that's somewhere between the two in terms of the direction. And I'm going to finish on that one. Go on. Nearly got me to 300. 297. Now that's long for me. That is long. Um, that flew 273, which is probably best part of 15 yards longer than my average. And it was still a fairway finder. You know, that one was acceptable offline at about 20 yards offline. So if I knew I was going to hit that draw shape, I'd be aiming down the right half. That would be finishing left half. Even if it's in left semi-rough, you can probably play from there, can't you? If you're further down, it's just trying to avoid out-of-bounds trees, water, that kind of thing. But that was long. That was definitely long for me. That was my quickest club head speed at 110 miles an hour. And it felt my biggest stretch in the backswing. So I'd say you don't know your potential until you give it a go. So some speed exercises working on these higher hands, great. But it's not just hands on their own. We've got to make that big turn, that tilted axis, and stretch those arms away from us. Give it a go, of course, on a driving range first or in a practice net. If you can take some measurements, gain some feedback to club head speed or ball speed gains, that would be ideal. If this video has helped, please hit the thumbs up, put some comments below, share it with as many golfers as you can. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my channel, at least two instructional videos a week. And right now, YouTube is suggesting the next video that's relevant for you, and it's just here, so click on that at the same time.